My name is Marty Young. And I'm Russell. Yep. Welcome to your guide to adopting used EVs. I hope you get a kick out of those pictures. But uh, all right, so Russell, why, why do we use the word adopting? Um, well, I mean, adopting, I know both of us have had pets that we've adopted before. Oh yeah, rescue pets. Exactly. And that's kind of what you're doing with these cars is you're rescuing this car uh, you know, that, that would normally be, you know, instead of buying an expensive new car, you can get into a slightly used car for a lot less. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, one of the cool things about this, too, and this kind of gets in, we're going to get to some of the similarities between uh, getting a used EV and rescuing a pet. But you think about it, you know, with the EV, someone basically gave that car up for adoption, you know. Well, and a lot of them are, are lease turnings, so they've yeah. been gently used. You know, yes. so they're very, they're, they're, they're not a car that's been beat up. They, most of them have under 36,000 miles. Most are under three years, especially their EVs are relatively new. Yeah, yeah. And, so, and, and that's the point. You know, lease turn-ins are coming out of fleets. Uh, maybe someone has used it for a while and decided they wanted more range, and so they're upgrading to another one. Um, but yeah, this is going to be fun. Anyway, hope you got a kick out of that slide. Let's, uh, let's take a look. And again, we're going to talk about this. Uh, as it relates to like rescuing pets, because that's what it's really cool. All right, here we go. So starting off, what are my choices? Well, you know, really it kind of boils down to this. It's kind of like, again, when you're rescuing a pet, you got two broad categories, right? You've got cats and dogs. And when it comes to EVs, you've got two broad categories. You know, you've got the plug-in hybrids, which is what I drive. Mm -hmm. And then there's the other ones. There, there's a, a regular EV or a battery electric vehicle, VEV. And uh, yeah, I think actually the picture is a, a really good interpretation because you have some that have a very short range that are perfect for city cars. <laughs> and then you've got the big dogs that are, they can go well over 200 miles. So oh, yeah. I, I think the picture is perfect because my car would be more on a right that actually little kitty. I think, Absolutely, so. I know. All right, so we actually have uh, a video of me showing my car. So that'll kind of introduce you to the whole plug-in hybrid thing. And then after that, uh, we'll come back and talk a little bit. And then uh, we've got a video of Russell, you showing your car. Yeah, I'm showing my Chevy Spark. So. The full battery electric. So let's go ahead and show the, uh, my video uh, about the plug-in hybrid. All right, here we are at my house. Let's go check out the EV. So this is it, the 2016 Chevy Volt. I bought it about a year and a half ago at CarMax. And overall, that was a great experience. There was actually some funny stuff that happened with that too. I'll tell you more about that later in the webinar. Right? You can see it's plugged in, so it is an EV, but technically it's a PHEV, which stands for Plug-In Hybrid Electric Vehicle. And when people hear that word hybrid, they kind of think, oh, they get confused by it. And they're like, so like a Toyota Prius? Like, no, this car is not like a Toyota Prius. The big difference is, it actually has a fairly large lithium ion battery pack in it. And this car can go 50, 55 miles, you know, just purely on electricity, purely on the battery, using no gas at all. And so that makes it really different from a typical hybrid. And then after the battery runs out, the gas engine kicks in. But even then it's kind of special because the gas engine under most circumstances doesn't make the wheels go. What the gas engine does is it powers an electric generator, which makes electricity. That electricity gets sent to the electric motor, and the motor makes the car go. So it's really kind of cool in that regard. Sometimes they refer to cars like that as range extended EVs or REX, R E X EVs. Um, but most of the time they just call them plug in hybrids. I plug it in at night when I get home from work. When I get ready to go to work in the morning, I just unplug it. Close the little charge door here, okay, and then I'm ready to go. All right, let's take a look at this. So this is the charger right here. You can actually charge this car up on just a standard 110 outlet like you plug a lamp into. The only thing is it's going to take a little while for this car to charge up at that speed. Anywhere from 13 to 15 hours if the battery is completely empty and you're charging it all the way up. I wanted to charge it up a little bit quicker than that. 
So I had an electrician come out and put in basically a dryer plug out here. Okay, that's a 220 plug, 30 amp, so the same thing that your dryer is plugged into. And I got this to plug into it, right? And it'll charge the car up in about four and a half hours. Okay, so that makes it pretty easy, pretty simple. All right, I'll tell you what, let's do this. Let's get in and take a look around. All right, so here we are in the car. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna turn it on and show some things to you. So I'm gonna put my foot on the brake, push the button. I don't know if you could hear that sound, kind of go when it comes on. It sounds like the Millennium Falcon coming to life. I love that. All right, because it's a plug-in hybrid, you've got the battery side of the gauge and you've got the gas side of the screen here. All right, so as you're looking at the screen, let me show you this. The left side, this is showing the battery. You can see it's fully charged up. Uh, it's telling us that we've got an EV range of about 58 miles. Um, and it just bases that on your last trip that you made in the car. And so since I didn't spend a lot of time on the interstate driving, uh, it gave me a bigger range, so 58 miles. Typically, like I said, the EPA range on this car, 53 miles. Might be a little less than that if you're spending all your time on the interstate. A little more than that if you're just around town. So right now it's showing that. And like I said, you can see that the battery is totally full. On the other side over here, you'll notice that this number down here is grayed out. That's the gas side. And it's grayed out because every time you turn on this car, and this is true of almost all plug-in hybrids, it comes up in battery mode. So the battery's active, the gas engine is off. You can see that I've got a gas tank that's, you know, three quarters full and that the range on the gas engine is 284. One cool thing about plug-in hybrids is that most of them, including this one, have what's called hold mode. And what that does is it forces the gas engine to run and it saves your battery. Where that comes in handy is on a longer trip. Let's say that, uh, you know, you're driving on the interstate and it's a long trip, maybe a thousand mile round trip, which we did a couple weeks ago. And as soon as you get on the interstate, you put it in hold mode. That forces the gas engine, you save your battery, and then when you get into cities or you're in stop and go traffic, you take it out of hold mode, put it back in battery mode, and just use the battery for that. So it allows you to save your battery. And here's how you do that. There's a button here called mode. And when you push it, the different modes come up on the screen. I'm in normal mode, which is battery mode right now. There's also sport. There's also something called mountain, that's a little bit different. And then there's something called hold. And that's the one that forces the gas engine to run. So as you watch the screen, you'll notice that the battery side went dark, the gas side came on and lit up, and so now it's running on the gas engine. You can't hear it because we're just sitting still and the gas engine won't kick in until we start moving. But it's in hold mode right now. To get out of hold mode and go back to battery mode, you just push the button again, goes back to normal. You'll see that the gas side goes dark, the battery side lightens up. There we go. Now we're back all electric again. So that's just one of the cool things that this car can do. So I'm going to turn it off and let's get out and just take a look around it. I just think it looks really sharp. I love this car. Let's take a look at the back of it. Here's the back of the car. I think it looks sharp back here too. It's a hatchback. Okay, so lots of space back here. The back seats fold down so you can fit tons of stuff in there. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in again. And that's my car, a Chevy Volt. Again, it's a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. The other kind of electric vehicle is the full battery electric vehicle. It doesn't have a gas engine in it. Those are sometimes called BEVs or BEVs. That's the kind of car that Russell has, and he'll show you his in his video here in just a minute. But the point is, to be an EV, it's either got to be a plug-in hybrid or a full battery electric. Either way, it's going to have a plug on it. So, if it doesn't have a plug, don't buy it. All right, we're back 
So this is funny. The, what I said at the end actually was, if it doesn't have a plug on it, don't buy it. But I said it so fast, it sounded like I said, don't buy it. So, <laughs> don't, don't buy it. Um, so anyway, that's the plug-in hybrid. And then uh, the full battery electric, that's yours. Yes. And I, and you and your daughter shot a video the yeah, other night? It was, it was that night. We have a lot of stuff going on. So we ended up having to shoot it at night. So the lighting is a little tough. And she's 12, so she did. She was super excited for her directorial debut. I, I love your video. So, I think it's awesome. So, so yeah, she's. So here's here's the video of my 2016 Chevy Spark. All right. Hi there. This is the 2016 Chevy Spark EV. It has a 19 kilowatt hour battery pack, which gives it a range of about 82 miles. I bought this car used about six months ago. And I've loved it. Well, let's get in the car so I can show you a couple of the features. All right, let's. We've got a push button start. Let's start her up and see what we've got. Here is the dash. You have multiple configurations you can use. You can do this one here, which shows you the mileage on the left, and then the acceleration or braking on the right. Uh, one more time, it gives you a little bubble that tells you that you can do a little better, or a little worse, however hard you hit the accelerator. And this is another one here where it shows you the power or the regen being used on the right. And this one here is my favorite. Um, it just gives you more of a range on both and lets you know what you're doing. It, it's really just a personal preference. And here we can check how to do the climate settings. Since you can do either the push button on the seven inch touch screen, or you can go down lower and you just turn the knobs uh, for the heating and air conditioning and it'll come automatically on. One of the things I really like about this car is that it actually shows you the amount of power being drawn from the battery. So when you're using it, if you're frugal like I am, you don't use the AC, you don't use the fans because you're afraid that it'll actually use energy and pull away from you. But to the normal person, it, it's a really nice thing, that, a nice feature to have. Um, you can either hit the electric info button on the seven inch touchscreen, or it has its very own dedicated button over here, which you can hit. And it'll go right to the uh, very important electric information you wanna get, whether it be power flow, charging, or something fun that I like to do is the energy info. This shows you what, you have u what has been used on your car for the battery. So driving accessories has been everything that I've used, no climate settings, no battery conditions. Um, and another one you can do in energy info is energy history, which will show you what you've been averaging the last 50 miles, which is kind of the gamification of driving, I think, with an electric car that makes it fun. Um, I really enjoy getting the most miles per kilowatt hour that I can, which is very annoying to my family. One of the great things about this car is it's a city car. So it's nice and small and can fit in everything. But it's not just a two door, it's a four door. So this car will seat four grown adults very comfortably. There's quite a bit of room in the front and, and actually it's pretty spacious in the back as well. And what the great thing with this is, with it being a hatchback, it has nine cubic feet of storage back here. Also, if you don't have anybody in the back seat, very small car, easy to get here, flip, pull these up, push them forward, and now you have 23 cubic feet of space in this little car. So you can move a big screen TV or pretty much anything that you need to use. So the Chevy Spark has a J1772 plug, but this one also comes with a DC fast charge plug. So with this top plug, you can use 110 or 120. The 110 takes about 20 hours to charge it from empty. The 220 takes about seven hours to charge from empty. But with DC fast charge, if you pull up to a Electrify America or EVGo or something that has DC fast charging, this car will charge full in about 20 minutes or so, which is a great feature if you're going anywhere outside of the city. It needs to be charged just like your phone. All you do, come over here, push it in there, plug it in. In the morning, I'm gonna have anywhere between 70 and 80 miles of range with the green light and a beep. 
means it'll be charged up and ready to go. And for the last six months, I've loved waking up in the morning and driving this car. All right, we're back. All right, I love that video. That's so, and that car is so cool. It's a fun little, it really is a fun little car to drive anywhere. Oh my gosh, that is so fun. All right, well, we're gonna get back into our PowerPoint presentation. We're gonna run through some cars here and, and just show them to you. What we did was we broke this down into, uh, well, first plug-in hybrids uh, and then the full battery electrics. But basically, uh, things that you can find for under 30,000, things that you can find for under 20,000, and things you can find for under 10,000 in each of those categories. All right, so first we're gonna talk about the plug-in hybrids, okay? And now, I'm, I know this sounds cheesy. I know the whole presentation's a little bit cheesy. Oh yeah, that's, that's, that's us. But that's just us. <laughs> Um, so the plug-in hybrids, to be honest with you, they're kind of, they're kind of the cats of the oh, EV world. Oh yeah, they are. Right? I mean, I love cats. I've had several of them, but you know how, not all cats, but some cats can have sort of a split personality. You know, they're like chill one minute, and then the next minute they're like tearing down the hallway. Oh yeah, or, or up your leg. Or up your leg. <laughs> or, you know, you're like, you know, that they come up and they flop over and they're like, rub my belly. Oh yeah. And so you rub it, and like a minute later, they're like, don't touch me. So anyway, so they kind of have that split personality. Plug-in hybrids definitely have a split personality, you know, because they're either 100% electric or they're running on gas. You know? Oh, yeah. Um, and there's, there's pluses and minuses to both those things. Uh, we'll get into that in just a little bit. But let's take a look. All right, let's pull this slide up here. All right, so these, these are two cars that we picked out for the under $30,000 uh, plug-in hybrid category. Um, first one, the Honda Clarity. Oh yeah, the, the Honda Clarity is a real interesting one because it's a big car. Yeah. It really is a pretty big car. And it's definitely I, bigger than my Volt. Oh yeah and, yeah, and that actually comes in multiple, you know, they have a plug-in hybrid plus an EV, and I think they even had a, a hydrogen version, but the plug-in hybrid, which is really nice, it's, it's about the size of, I would say, an Accord. Yeah. So it's a, it's a relatively large vehicle, and I mean, it's a, it's a really neat vehicle to Go on a longer trip, like you said, like with your car. If you're going to be in the city, you know, you save the mileage, you know, uh, you, or you you save a lot of gas by driving solely on electricity. But when you get on the highway, when electric vehicles tend to struggle when you get up around 60, 70 to be as efficient as they are in the city. Right. Um, but yeah, that's it's a really neat vehicle. It really is. Yeah. Now the there is an all electric Honda Clarity and a fuel cell version. Yeah, the, the all electric I think is 80 miles. So yeah. it's and it and the fuel cell were only sold in California. Okay. So you can't get those anywhere else. But the but the Clarity plug-in hybrid, it's available nationwide. Um, I will say this, um, I did talk with a Honda dealership. They only actually stock them at the dealerships in California, but you can order them from any dealership in the country. You just won't find them on the lot. Oh, it just take a little while for you to get one from California. Well, yeah, because I mean, it's just, it, they're not going to have them on the lot. But you can still get it. Uh, but yeah, this, they're, they're great cars. The one thing that I've heard about them though, and I don't, I've never driven one, so I don't know for sure um, on this, but just the reviews I've seen on it, they said that when the gas engine kicks in, it's louder uh, in the Clarity than it is like in the Volt. Okay. Um, but again, I've, I've not driven one, but it's, yeah, they're a good sized car. And, and it, it, it's an acquired taste. The look is an acquired taste, but I like quirky cars. Yeah. So definitely, some agree. of them, they try to make them a little more space agey, I think, to yeah. make them yeah. uh, stand out. Oh, I did see one in person, though. Did um, you? I did, outside of Panera Bread one day. Um, it's, it looks cool in person. It really does. And look at the electric range on that, okay? 47 miles. That's, that's second only to the Chevy Volt. The Volt at 53, that at 47. Um, look, that's... That's all you need typically in a day. Yeah, I was going to say, I would, I would think most people, I know that Chevy did the, when they came out the first one, it was 35 miles, right? right yeah, 30, and then the second one, they, they went up to 55 or, or so. 53, and but so, yeah. yeah. And that should definitely cover most people's daily oh, commutes. Yeah, we'll talk about that when we get to Especially with Regen. Oh, dude. The Regen is what makes that so much fun. And so you're almost cheating on the mileage. It's, so. it's, it's crazy fun. All right, so the Prius Prime right now, in, in my video, I said that the Chevy Bolt is not like a Prius, and that is 100% true if we're talking about the regular plain old Prius, sometimes called a soft hybrid, okay, which was cutting edge technology 
20 years ago. Let's say 2001 <laughs> or whenever it <laughs> right. came out, yeah. Right, so let's we move beyond that, people. All right, but this one, uh, so the Toyota Prius Prime is a different animal, okay? So the Prius Prime is a true plug-in hybrid, okay? It will go 25 miles purely on electricity, never using the gas engine at all, just like a true plug-in hybrid. Um, but it does have a gas engine. It'll kick in and obviously has a good range. You know, almost, it looks, the range is pretty amazing. Almost, actually, I mean, 600 miles, real close well, to 600. That's yeah. multiple bathroom breaks and, <laughs> and, and sure. food breaks. I mean, especially for me because I'm getting older. <laughs> but, you know, here's, I mean, but yeah, now the reason why it's gotten almost the total range. Let me explain that, by the way. The total range is the all-electric range plus the gas range, right? So mm -hmm. it's everything. Um, but yeah, that's because it's got a fairly large gas tank. Okay. And that thing. Like my Volt, I've got nine gallon gas tank. Wow. That's it. That's it. But that's all I need. So that has like a true yeah, 13 gallon yeah, or whatever it would have. I don't think it's quite 15, but it's pretty okay. good size. All right. But anyway, that Prius Prime, it's, it is a different animal from the regular Prius. And, you know, the, now that range of 25 miles seems a little on the, a little on the skimpy side. Oh, yeah. But it's all about what you need. You know, there's a, uh, um, like Ken, Ken is a, a guy in Kiva, Knoxville Electric Vehicle Association. And uh, he and his wife have a Prius Prime. I saw it a couple of weeks ago, beautiful car. And we were talking about that. He said, yeah, he said, you know, but here's the deal. He said, my wife is the one that drives that all the time. He said her commute to and from work. So round trip commute is like 13 minutes. Wow. That's all they need. Yeah, they could not charge it for two days pretty much. Yeah. And yeah. on a tiny little, on a tiny battery like that. I mean, what, and what, what makes that car? Okay, I've driven a Prius before. They're not fun. But if you make it a plug-in, now, it's, now fun it's fun. Because you have the power that you just don't have in a regular hybrid. Yeah. yeah. You know, I'm sure you're zero to 60 time or <laughs> zero to 30 is actually what that's most people. Fun. Because, I mean, most people, that's what you use, especially if you're driving it in the city. Yeah. Is you're really only really not going to get it up to 60 in the city, or at least you shouldn't legally. No. <laughs> um, but definitely, you know, that car, like I said, sometimes you get behind a Prius and it's really dragging really slow or you're driving behind me. And, but when you have that battery in there, it really gives you a huge boost. I mean, you have all that torque. Oh, listen. As soon as you put out, push on the accelerator. If there's one message I can give to anybody watching this right now, it's do not judge electric cars <laughs> by a Toyota Prius. Yes. Uh -uh. Yeah. No. Yeah, at least a regular Prius, a Prime. Prime might be different. Definitely yeah. would be different. So. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's look at the under $20,000 category here on this. All right, so my my beloved. That's Chevy all you, I just, I love you that. know everything I love about it. that. Dog. I love it. That's all right, so the second generation Volt, which came out, you can see the years on there, 2016 to 2019. They don't make it anymore. Um, there's a couple reasons for that. Chevy said that, the one, people aren't buying sedans. Anymore. Okay, yeah. Um, and they wanted to focus their efforts more on the all electric, which is the bolt to the B. Okay, I don't know who at Chevy. Yeah, that, that person thought it was a good idea I, I, to name one car a bolt with a B and a bolt, which is the and, all electric. And make them the actually at the same time. They were actually out at the same time for two years, yeah, or two or three years. I don't so. know who came up with that, but they're, <laughs> they're, they're adults. Anyway, all right, so the all electric range is 53 miles on that car. Uh, love that. Absolutely love that is it. a ton. That really is a lot of money. All right, so let me, all right, so here's the deal. Here's the deal. All right, so I, I live in Maribel, work in West Knoxville. Uh, my round trip commute, so to work and back home, round trip, 45 miles. Okay, great. All right, this is a 53 mile range. Yeah. You know, that's, it covers everything, everything, um, even including, you know, some errands and stuff, right? The only time, only time I use gas in that car is when we go out of town. Okay. And I tell this to people a lot, and they look at me like I'm crazy. Last year, I put 16,000 miles on that car, okay? Of those 16,000 miles, 14,000 of them were 100% pure electric, no gas. So you took two long trips is what you took <laughs> all year. Just, you, know, you took two long trips, and that's when you use the gas pretty yeah, much. I mean, think about that. 14,000 out of 16,000 16, miles, all electric. Uh, I bought it at CarMax. We'll talk more about that later, because that was fun. Um, Got it at CarMax in January of 2019. It had half a tank of gas in it when I got it. Okay, it's only a nine-gallon tank. All right, I didn't put gas in that car until May. Really? Yeah, I went I, to January I, to May without putting gas in it. So it's nuts. It's crazy. Um, so you know, it's a crazy good. 
I'll, I'll say that. Well, I will say about the, the BMW i3, that is a very interesting car. Oh, that is a sharp one. Just yeah. because the way it's assembled is completely different than most other cars. It's got the, the carbon fiber, what is it, like a carbon fiber, is it a monocoque or whatever, whatever it's called, where the, the frame is pretty much carbon fiber, yeah. pretty much. Yeah. And, and, and aluminum too, right? Yeah, and, but it's it's really and it's a relatively expensive car, brand new. I think they started in the forties. Oh, dude, brand, brand new. new. They still make that car. Brand new is like forty eight thousand. But the interior, it looks like a living room. I mean, the interior is really, I mean, really beautiful. German, if you're into German cars, that would be the car to get, I would think. And if look at the range, I mean, look at the range from when they first came out to what they are. You know, well, what we would have to 2018, but you know, it goes from 72 to let's say 100 miles just on electric now, and that's more than most people ever knew need. And then with it being the range extender, uh, did you not said? Will you tell? It's got a two gallon two, tank. Yeah. So the range, so, so that's got a two gallon gas tank. So it's got a motorcycle okay. gas tank, pretty much. <laughs> on there. It's pretty much a motorcycle. Which is why, with four wheels. when you as you're looking at the numbers up there, okay, that's that's why the difference between the electric range and the total range. I mean, it's not a huge difference. No, no, not at all. I mean, in the first version of it, 72 all electric, 150, and that includes the gas, but that's two gallons of gas yeah. added to that. Um, well, if you want to get noticed, though, that is the car, because every time you see that car, it just sticks out like a sore thumb. It, and I in love it. In a good it. way. Yeah, I, it almost reminds me like a bulldog. You know, this is real, <laughs> it's just, it's kind of, it's kind of chubby up front. I mean, it's just, it's, it's a neat car. And then the way the back door opens, because yes. it's a clamshell, right? Yeah. Isn't that the way yeah. it opens? Yeah. Kind of like the old, yeah. super cool car. It, it really a, an awesome car. But, I, have a, I have a neighbor I'm trying to convince to buy one who's a BMW file or whatever. But, he, he only has BMWs. But, but, but think about this, y'all. You can, you, can, you can get this car just a few years old and it's like under $20,000. Yeah, I mean, you're looking at a car that's still under warranty for the most, I mean, some of those cars would still be completely under warranty if you have any issues with that. And yeah, I mean, for less than half of what you pay, what somebody paid brand new. Brand new, that car's 48,000. You can buy a good Tesla Model 3 for 48,000. Yes. Used cars are the way to go. They, <laughs> they really are. You're saving yourself a ton of money. I know. All right, we're going to pick the pace up. Sorry. We're, we're, Sorry. <laughs> I knew this was going to happen to us. I knew <laughs> time we get together, man. Oh, we yeah, just, I know. Sorry. All right, so under 10,000, there's one base, basically good option here, and that's the first generation Chevy Bolt, all right? Uh, I said that it came out 2010, all right? So they're, they're actually the very first ones were built 2010, but they actually, I think, are considered 2011. 20, okay. Model. Okay, up to 2015. And you'll notice that the first couple of years, it had a 35-mile electric range after that. Um, great car. Great car. I mean, you know, that's a, that's a fantastic car for under 10000 Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, just in saving, I don't think people realize how much money you're saving by putting electrons in the car instead of just gasoline. It's crazy. It's nuts. All right, let's move on to the full battery electric. My favorite. These, these are yours. Oh, <laughs> how about, hey, my, no, next, no, I, my next one's going to be full. Oh, that's what it is. That's It's an introduction into battery. Yeah. Uh, All right, EVs. so plug-in hybrids are kind of gateway cars. Oh, yeah, it's a gateway drug. Yeah, you can say gateway drug. It's fine. Okay. It's, can we? It's a family <laughs> webinar. I don't know. All right, so I, these, All right, so if plug-in hybrids are the cats. This is the dog. Faithful, loyal. loyal. Yes, okay. they are. They are. All right, let's take a look here at some of these. Okay. Uh, I, I. You want to talk about the Tesla? Or you want I, to I'll talk about the Tesla a little bit. If okay. You want. Okay. I we checked, just had. I, we I, had to put this in. I here. just checked this morning, and there is one for thirty thousand dollars. I think it's on Cargo Roots. Oh no, uh, myev.com. Thirty thousand miles, one hundred sixty-one thousand miles is what. Oh, one hundred sixty-one thousand miles for thirty thousand bucks. Yes. Yeah. That's about. That's how you're gonna get a used. Yeah, they, Teslas are very difficult to buy used because they retain their value so well. But if you, I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful large sedan. I mean, that is the. It 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 is what has made that that car is what made electric cars cool. That car oh, right there is what absolutely. made everybody. Well, it and the Roadster. Right? Oh, no, you, yeah, this one is actually yeah. you can actually buy. I mean, you know, it's yeah. under one hundred and fifty thousand dollars or whatever right. I think the Roadster was, but. It really is a, a, a great car, okay. um, and yeah, go ahead. All right, so early model, right? Yes, 2012. 2012, I don't, I don't think you'll even find a 2014 for it. No, I, like I said, you're going to need one with a ton of miles on it. Oh, yeah, we're talking well over 100,000 miles to get under $30,000 in that car. And we need to talk about the salvage thing. Oh, yeah, that's a, that's a huge, 
that's really yeah that's so. you want back a battery well it, you know there, the issue is that tesla when somebody like rich rebuilds who does youtube videos or whatever he'll buy these cars that have been salvaged and he'll fix them the issue is that tesla will not allow them to use their supercharged network supercharging network unless they have certified it which is really difficult to have done oh listen if it's listed as a salvage car okay tesla will shut off not only the supercharger network okay they'll shut off all dc fast charging on that network. okay so you can't take electrify america or anything mm -hmm. no so in other words do your homework okay before you buy a used tesla the one thing you just really want to know is is this a salvage car so you can check with tesla though right like you i think give you them can the i think you can give them the sure. bin and check um, and then the other thing too, dang it, take it to a supercharger, plug it in and see if it works, okay? Because um, that's a huge deal with used Teslas. Make sure it's not a self. Yes. Uh, all right, um, all right, Nissan, Nissan Leaf. All right, if we're talking about used EVs, okay? The Nissan Leaf, look, they were the first mass market Leaf to come out. I mean, come on. And so they've been out since like 2011. And uh, so we need to pick the pace up because we, <laughs> we could talk for three hours. Yes. All right. But uh, so this one, the Leaf Plus, okay, uh, 226 miles. It's the 2019 model year. You can get some 2019 Leaf Pluses from it. Okay. Absolutely can. Now let's jump forward, okay? And you'll notice that the car didn't change. I'm under $20,000 now, okay? Uh, and, and so it looks the same, but this is one with the smaller battery pack. Is that the 40 it's kilowatt, the 40, 40 the kilowatt hour battery pack? Right. And so uh, anyway, so it's, yeah, it's got 150 mile range. So now we're under 20. And then uh, the other one, that's the other car you've got. We first jumped into buying a battery electric vehicle with the Chevy Bolt. And it, it has been a fantastic, my wife was very leery about going all electric because what about the range? What about, you know, plugging in and this and that. And we, we have tried, we traveled all the way from Knoxville to Atlanta and we still had 40 miles of range left. Plus once you get to a big city, there's tons of charging everywhere. We had all kinds of free charge. We went to malls and they had free charging. Yeah. So that car is, not, I'm shocked to see there's a car. I saw one today, $18,000 in Georgia for sale. Right. And and it, I think it was even a premiere. I think it was a little higher on the mileage, but that means it's got almost all the bells and whistles. I mean, the yeah. heated seats, front and back. I mean, it's- Look, I'm pound for pound, mile for mile. I think that's the best deal in a year. Oh, most definitely. I'm, yeah, I'm, come on. I wish you would have waited a year. Buddy. I mean, one. 238 but, miles. Yeah, it's a it's a great car. It really is. Tons of fun to drive. Very happy. It's, it is, For like you said. Under 20000 It's insane. Yes. It's crazy. All right. Uh, there was a question that came up about uh, battery life, battery degradation. We're going to touch on that. I'm going to jump ahead because we do want to get to that eventually. Um, I promise we'll talk about that. This is the under 10000 There's yours. Yes, that's my favorite. favorite. The Chevy Spark EV. Uh, like I said, it's a great city car. I mean, it's really, really fast. I mean, zero sixty is like seven set, seven point two seconds. So I have no problem zipping in and out of traffic. Um, it, the freeway, you know, it does. When you get up to 65, 70 miles an hour, you know, you, you're definitely not getting the same range as you're going to get staying in the city. If I'm staying in the city, I might drive uh, several miles and the battery not go down at all because I keep regening every time I'm slowing down. I'm putting free energy back into the car. That, that's that's what makes me tons of fun. It has, like I said in my video, it's got tons of room on the pa for the passenger. Granted, it only seats four, but they're relatively comfortable yeah. in there. Yeah. So it's, it, but it's a fun little car. You can find them. A lot of, they were only sold in California, Oregon, and a little bit in Maryland. But there are some peppered throughout the country. They kind of trickle out in the country. On the people ones. move. You yeah. know, people move and go to different places. I know I found mine in Johnson City, of all places. Yeah, I found it. I just searched it online, found it on uh, Johnson, Johnson, Johnson City. City. So. That's cool. Let's talk about the Nissan Leaf. This is the early model Nissan Leafs, right? So 2011, you can see on the screen, 2011 all the way up to about 2017. After 2017 is when they changed to the new look on that. Um, yeah, so the early ones, look, uh, so battery degradation, we're going to talk about that in just a little bit. They did have degradation issues, mm -hmm. okay? If you buy a 2011 or 2012 Nissan Leaf, it's not going to have a 73 mile battery. No. It's going to be maybe 60. It could be in the 50s. That's a possibility, but you know, and we'll talk about that. Um, but you can also, because of that, you can get them for like, you can get some of those for under 5000 Yeah, I saw some for, I know for six. I definitely saw some for six. Yeah. So I mean, for a commuter car, say you're driving 25, like, you know, 13 miles, 25 miles. Oh, that, oh, we're going to get to that. Gotcha. We'll get to that. So right. get to that. Hey, real quick, I want to share this with you. So when we were putting this together, this is totally coincidental. 
uh, found out that right now, this week, is National Adopt a Less Adoptable Pet Week. Oh, really? I had no idea when we were putting this together. <laughs> All right, so what's a less adoptable pet? Uh, basically a senior pet, one that's okay. a little bit older uh, and has special needs. In other words, if we're talking EVs, <laughs> It's an early, early model. model. That's yes, what it, is. it still needs. It'll, it'll, it'll serve you very well. It just needs a little extra. It, it, does. <laughs> it does. It is. It is the less adoptable. Yeah, that's for sure. All right. So here we go. So which one is right for me? Okay. All right. So you've decided that uh, you know you want an, an EV, either a plug-in hybrid or uh, you know all electric one. I'm trying to figure out which one it is. All right. There's a saying when it comes to shelter pets, which is that all shelter pets are great. Yes but not all shelter pets are great for you. Yes. Uh, same for EVs, you know, all EVs are great, all used EVs are great, but not all of them are great for you, so you have to figure out what's good for you. All right, so boils down to two questions. All right, first question is, what are my needs? Yes. What are my needs? And y'all take a look at those pictures. I work really hard on this, okay? All right, so what are my needs? And- I got this one. Next one. Does, Does it match, match my needs? needs? There you go. <laughs> my, fav my favorite is the one on the right. I love the dachshund. I would love to see that happen. I know, isn't um, that awesome? That could be that could happen at one of the uh, one of the ice hockey games here. They already do the wiener dog races. Yeah. You just need to attach some things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So let's let's get into this. All right. Some things to consider. Things to think about. All right. With a with a used EV. All right. So let's run through some of these here. All right, will this be your only car or will this be your family's second car? That's huge. Yes, very important. That's huge, all right. Um, I mean, if this is your only car and you're making routine long trips and all of that stuff, maybe plug-in hybrids. Oh yeah, now, if you're taking trips, like you're going hundreds of miles once a week, you know, where you're doing long journeys, especially, we're working here in East Tennessee to get better a better charging network, yeah. but some places it is a struggle if you're driving to places that aren't bigger cities. Yeah. You, you can find issues charging with uh, trying to find Electrify America or EVGO yeah. or one of those. But, you know, if you got a used Bolt with a 238-mile range, come all the way to the car, you know, I'm telling you. But, uh, so that's definitely something to get. Look, if this is your family's second car, guys, you can get it whatever you want. Yeah. If this is just an around town, back and forth to work, you've got a short commute, look, an early model Nissan Leaf for less than 5000 bucks yeah. with it. Yeah, mine, like I said, mine, I think it was about 9000 is what we got it out the door. And it, it has about 78, 79, so just under 82 miles now. But I drive 25 miles back and forth to work. So 20, 12 miles there, 12 miles back. Yep. I can go multiple days, never had any issues. Yep. And it it's, saves you so much money. Yeah, yeah. And all right, so leads us into the second question. Yes. How much range do you really need? Okay, people, you don't drive as much in a day as you think you do. I mean, you're in a car, you're like, your commute is like an hour. And you're like, man, I've been in the car for an hour. Yeah, and you travel 20 miles. Or yeah, or 30 miles. Yeah, 20 or 30 miles because of stop and go traffic. Right, right. right. Okay, so here's here's what I want you to do. Okay, if you're seriously considering getting an EV, keep track of how many miles you drive, and do that every day for a week. Okay, and just see how that plays out. Yeah. Or yeah. or just set your trip on your car. Yeah. Okay. And set it for the whole week. In case you're lazy. Well, I like doing it by the day because I'm talking about how much do you, because all you're getting yeah. into how much do you drive in a day? Mm -hmm. And just do that this day, this day, this day, this day, and kind of get an average, right? Because that's, you know, that's what you need. If, we're, if you're looking for just a second car, commuter car, you just, it just needs to cover your daily commute. My recommendation on that, by the way, is whatever your average, average daily drive is, uh, find an EV that can do two to three times that. Well, because cold weather does play a factor. Not so much here in, in East Tennessee, but it does affect it does. the battery won't won't hold it. it does. And there'll be some days when you want to travel a little bit further, you get more errands run, but if it covers twice your commute, you know, who and, knows? and I was gonna say if you take long trips once a year, good for them. You could rent a car and you get in a brand new car that you you know it's I, it's got, it can be fun. It can be, we're on vacation. This is how we're on vacation. You stay in another place anyways. Right. Now you're staying in somebody else's car. All right, all right we got to pick up the pace, man. There we go. All right, so how much room do you need? Uh, you know, all right, so all the cars we've been looking at generally are pretty small. Uh, now, the Honda Clarity, pretty good yes, size. Good size yeah. Obviously, the Tesla Model S is good size. But most of them are kind of small. But here's the deal about small electric cars. They're like those tents in Harry Potter. 
you know? You know, you go in it and it's like, where's all this space? You know, I feel that way about like the bolt. Yeah, oh yeah, the bolt has a, has, a, has a false floor in the back where a spare tire would normally sit. Yeah. So that whole, that whole extra space is hidden. It's actually nice if you want to hide like your, like a purse or something, you know, or some kind of valuable. So yeah. you went shopping, you hide it underneath that false floor, people might not even know it's there. Yeah, yeah. So they're, they're big. You just need to get in it and look. Well, and hatchbacks themselves, which most of them are, have more room. I mean, once you fold seats yeah. down, you need to move a TV or go to the store, you can actually have a lot of stuff in there. Pretty amazing. Right. Where are you going to charge it? Obviously, if you have your own house, charging it at home, it's super easy, like you saw in our videos. Um, if you live in an apartment, it's a little bit more of a challenge. So, you know, do you have workplace charging? If you do, then that takes care of it. You just charge it there. Uh, you know, another option would be uh, getting a DC fast charger uh, for an hour once a week or whatever to top it up. It just it depends. I'll admit, it is a little bit trickier when you don't have your own place. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, if you're renting or you're moving from one, one apartment to another, that could definitely could be difficult. But if you buy a vehicle that could do your entire week's worth of driving on one charge. Like a bolt. Like a, I sound like a Chevy. You should really, you Chevy should really sell Chevys. You could, no, you could sell Chevys. I'm not but, sure. yeah, definitely something like that. Say you drive 200 miles in a week. That has 240-mile range. Yeah. So on your weekend, you could go, you could go to one of the parks here. And you can plug it in at that park, uh, the YMCA right there. They have a you can park there, walk when you go walk the dog. All right. All right. And uh, all right. So the Volt is the one and only Chevy I've ever bought in my life. Mm -hmm. And the only reason that I bought Chevy for that is because they're the one that makes the Volt. And that's, you know, I, saw, I don't have great love for GM. It's just that they made a really good car. Okay. Um, where is the closest location for service? That's all right. Now, some of you might be wondering how come we didn't include. The uh, Hyundai, how do you say that? Hyundai. Hyundai. Uh, Hyundai. Hyundai. Hyundai like Sunday. Hyundai Sunday. Hyundai. Okay. All right. I'll Kia. Oh, Kia. Oh. The Kia too. So, so, the, so the Hyundai Kona, Kona. Or the Kia Nero EV. EV. Or the Kia Soul EV. We didn't, because you can't get them service here. Yeah. Oh, I definitely looked into it. And the closest place, I think, uh, for the Kia is Atlanta. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, and the, the, and the Hyundai, Hyundai. All right, so I called the Hyundai dealership. I said, can, can you service these here? They laughed at me. They said, no, the only states where Hyundai services the EVs, get this, New York, New Jersey, and California. So, they don't cover much of it. Uh, not yet. Not yet. They better get their ass. Well, I know. I, I looked at, when I was looking at the Spark, I also looked at a Fiat 500e, a little car, um, which has an even smaller, it has a very tiny back, but that, I thought would be a really awesome, fun little car, and it's really cool. Don't service here. I I, I thought well maybe with the Chrysler Pacifica they get, no they don't Fiat doesn't have anything to do with those. Yeah, but and all all the cars that we showed you today though are service local. Mm -hmm. um, I checked. I called the BMW dealership. They said yep, we, we take care of that. And that would be something that I would check anyways. If you were looking into those cars, it only takes a couple of minutes to call a dealership and ask them if they service. Yeah. Make sure they know that it's an electric vehicle. Vehicle yeah. because but some of these manufacturers only sell one electric know, vehicle. So, but look, I, I called the Nissan dealership. Obviously, the Chevy dealerships do that. Um, BMW. So they all the ones we showed you today are service. There we go. All right, how do I find them? All right, we were going to do a real time search uh, for this, but we're going to run out of time, so I don't think I can necessarily do that. Um, but I just do want to show you this. Okay. All right. So where to find these rascals? Um, you know what? One of my all-time favorite websites, okay, is this one right in the center, right here, myev.com, okay? Yes. It's a fantastic website for doing a search, uh, just just research on a car. Um, because all they sell, it's it's used cars. Yes. Just used cars, and it's just EVs. So yeah, you go look at all there. EVs and EVs. Only. Exactly. It's like plug-in hybrids and EVs, that's it. Um, and so uh, you can research vehicles there. You probably, you'll have a hard time finding a used car close to us here. In yeah, they do a lot of nationwide stuff. They do a lot, a lot of car, Carvana yeah. type stuff. Yeah, um, but it's great for research. Let me say something else about myev.com. Right? So there's, they have a talk thing on that. You can call them, okay, a real, they're based in Miami. A real person will answer the phone, okay? And you can just talk with, you can ask them any question about electric vehicles that you want. They'll just chat with you and talk with you. That's about awesome. It. I mean, because basically um, it's a free website, right? Um, so look, they're happy to talk with you about 
and they got they have a, you know good research articles and stuff like that. So start there. That's awesome. Okay. And then, like I said, I bought mine at CarMax. Mm -hmm. Right. Real quick, let me just say this about CarMax. Again, we're kind of running short on time. Um, fantastic buying experience. Had a lot of fun. They are totally clueless about you. Um, they just are. <laughs> but that's so, like most dealerships. Honestly. I know. I know. But anyway, so I had my car sent up for me. I found it in Atlanta. It cost me 99 bucks to have it shipped up here. Um, pay attention to the shipping costs, you know, because if you have one shipped from California, it's going to cost you like a little bit more, yeah. 1500 yeah. bucks or something. So anyway, so the car shows up and the guy, super nice guy at CarMax that was the sales associate there. We go driving in the car. So it's a test drive, right? So I'm in the driver's seat. He's in the passenger seat. And we're driving. He's like, this is so cool. This, he had never ridden in one before. Yeah, he's like, this is so awesome. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, and halfway through the test drive, we pull over, and I say, you drive it. He's like, really? I'm like, yeah. So he's in the driver's seat. I'm in the passenger seat. How you convert him you gotta, right. if you let him drive it. He's, he's doing the test drive, and I'm telling him how the car works. That's funny. He's like, this thing is amazing. I'm like, I know. You just sold that guy a whole. So I mean, you should get a commission on that. You should have called him up. All right. So warning to about CarMax's website with EVs. If you go there, it will show you the all-electric range of the car, and it's totally wrong. Okay. Because what they're showing you is not the all electric range of the car, but they're, they're showing you the miles per gallon of equivalent. Range. Okay. So to say like 133, well, right. it won't go 133. Yeah, if you go to CarMax and look at a bolt, it'll say that it's got a range of like 120 miles. Yeah, 119, I think it's, yeah, yeah. something like that. Yeah. That's the miles per gallon equivalent. That's not the total range. So again, CarMax is clueless, but it was a great buying experience, and I recommend it. When I found both my cars on CarGurus, that's where I found them, was on CarGurus. Targeters. That's yeah, cool. that, that's a great site. It really is. That is cool. And then uh, Carvana. All right, so I've got a couple of friends that have bought cars off Carvana, and, and they love it. It's entirely online. They deliver the car to your house. Uh, both CarMax and Carvana, both, by the way, the seven day. Uh, oh, like a trial kind yeah, of a deal. Seven day like it. period. And if for any reason, just I don't like the color, you can turn it back in free, total refund after seven days. Awesome. Um, and that's true for Carvana and CarMax, and they're, they're great places. But cars.com is another good one, okay? But, uh, but yeah, I, you know, I love my EV.com as far as, you know, just, if nothing else, just look information. at Information. Yeah, it's like a dictionary, I mean, or an encyclopedia of EV yeah. information. All right, so if CarMax is clueless about EVs, my EV.com is the total opposite. Yeah, they're the genius. If they, you look up, yeah, if you look up uh, a Chevy Bolt, on myev.com, it will give you the, it, the correct all electric range. It'll tell you the miles per gallon equivalent. They don't get those confused. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a good place to do your research. But then these other ones, CarMax, Carvana, CarGurus, Cars.com, Auto Trader. Um, yeah, yeah, you can find those. But I, again, I had great experience with, uh, with CarMax. It was just kind of fun on that. All right, let's talk about the, the elephant in the room. Battery degradation. Okay. All right. So here's the deal. Okay. Um, yes, there is some degradation involved. Usually it's not as much as you think. Okay. Um, so this federal law mandates that all EVs sold in the U.S. have a battery warranty of at least eight years, 100,000 miles. That's federal law. They all come with that. But be aware of the fact that that law only warranties against total battery failure, not degradation. Yeah. Some of them they have a certain percentage, right? Right. Supposedly. So I mean, yes. Yeah. I've heard it can be a fight sometimes, but. Right, so let's jump forward to that, okay? So most EV manufacturers, including all these that you see on the page here, which these are the ones that we've kind of been focusing on to a certain extent today. Um, yeah, they, if it's under warranty and it's lost a certain percentage of its range, they will replace the battery um, on that. I'll be honest with you, it's been mo morally, morally, is that a word? <laughs> More of an issue for the Nissan Leaf. But that, that comes to the fact that it is passively cooled, not actively cooled right. or heated. It's got, you know, it doesn't have a thermal management. Um, right. It's just an actual battery pack. Um, and look, heat is what kills a battery. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. So the Chevy Volt and Chevy Bolt, um, Bolt and Bolt, there's those words again. Uh, so that's a, that's a, uh, it has liquid cooling, mm -hmm. active thermal management, they call it. Uh, Y'all, there is very, very little degradation on, on those batteries. And a lot of it has to do with the, the active cooling mm -hmm. on that. With, it's, it does. It has a separate cooling system and radiator. Well, they had an well. issue sometimes with uh, the batteries getting too hot when you're deep, when you're fast charging them. I know with some of the leaks, 
yeah. when they mm -hmm. were trying, they was, uh, uh, whatever that was called. But anyways, when, when they charged, the battery just couldn't cool itself off fast enough, right, to take enough of the charge. Right. So it's, it throttled the charge back. Right, so Nissan, I will say this though, uh, the Nissan Leafs starting 2016 and moving forward have done better. Um, so they've done some re-engineering and stuff there. They're still passively cool. They're still air cool, but they're doing a better job with that. All right, this is an interesting chart here. So this is EVs ranked by battery degradation just after one year. Okay, top 10. And number one on the list is the bulk. They're showing, uh, this is out of uh, 6,000 uh, cars that were uh, tested for this, this survey. Uh, zero percent degradation. It's not bad. That's it's not really bad. not bad. I'll be honest. That, yeah. that seems like a good yeah. number. And then all the way down to the bottom of this list, you're, you know, 1.2 percent yeah. out of the first year. All right. Which is very minimal if you think what one percent of. One percent out of you know 230 miles. Yeah, yeah. Or um, all right. And then uh, so this list, these are the worst ten, starting at the top. Uh, number one is the worst of the worst. All right, so Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrid was in 4% after the first year. And usually with degradation, there's, you know, the first few years is when there's going to be kind of a, a drop and then it kind of plateaus mm -hmm. out. And that would be less than, on, on that Mitsubishi Outlander, that's, what, 20, is it 20 miles or so on that? Yeah, Something like it doesn't, it's, so, a, it's a plug-in hybrid. It doesn't have okay, but I'm just saying, but you, would, you wouldn't be losing much, 4% yeah. of 20 miles. Right, right. I mean, Okay, You're now, less yeah, than a half of a mile. Exactly. Now, you know, but it is something to keep in mind. So let's let's talk about this real quick. Okay. Um, and uh, good, we'll have time for some QA here at the end. Uh, so this, yeah, this is the bottom line regarding battery degradation. Okay. Does the EV still have enough range for you? And that gets back to you know, how much range do you need? That question that we talked about. You know, right? And uh, you know, yeah, we're getting <laughs> they're trying to get on us to wrap up. All right, so, uh, and now here's the thing. I've, I've listened to a podcast with a guy whose job it was, he's based in Toronto, and he's basically, a, I guess, a broker. You go to him and say, I want to buy an EV, a used EV. So you find me a good one, you know, and all of that. And he, so he finds one. And they asked him, he said, how can, how do you determine how much battery life is left? And there's some different tricks and things like that. But he said, really, the best thing to do, charge it all the way up and drive it all the way down. Uh, so, you know, during the test drive period or the trial period where you've got it for seven days, uh, you know, charge it up, drive your commute and back. Now, if you're going to drive it all the way to zero, stay close to the house. Oh, yeah, so yeah. Get and drive around your neighborhood a few times yeah, you know, to get it closer. So just to. see what it does. See what it does. And, you know, let's say it's an early model Nissan Leaf and there's like 55 miles of range on that car. Okay, well, if, if you're like, you know, Ken and his wife and, you know, got a 13 mile commute, that's, you know. It's going to take you four days, roughly. All right. So that's three to four days, yeah. That's good. And it kind of gets back to my rule about, you know, especially if you're doing all electric, it's good to have a car that can do two to three times your normal commute. Just just in case. Just just so you got it. Just so you got it. If it's a plug-in hybrid, it's a non-issue. Yes. Okay. But just just in case if you're going all electric. And that's that's it. Look, if it's got enough range for you, it's worth it. It's Drive the wheels off. Absolutely. And it'll be great while you're testing it. They're, they're the most fun car you'll ever drive. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and we've got some questions that came up right here. So let me go back up through some of the some of the things here. Let's see. All right, so Ooh, that's a good one right there. Yeah. So uh, Larry was talking about his uh, 2016 BMW i3, and he's got the full battery electric vehicle. And I, just, I forgot to mention that the i3 there's a full battery electric, and mm -hmm. then there's the range extended. Um, and uh, he's talking about that uh, he's had to have the tires, like six tires replaced before 20,000 miles. It's called torque. Tons of torque. That's the problem. It's, it's, I mean, I know for me, it, yeah, I mean, you take off from the stop and you've got, my, the, the Spark has 327 pound feet of torque. You're going <laughs> to rip the tires off that thing. Yeah. They're, they're eco tires. A lot of these are, you know, they're not yeah. built to, you, the, yeah, you're going to wear them out because it's got a ton of torque. That's <laughs> what I would. But I, I freaking love taking off on the stuff. Larry, right? I'm sure you have a, a lead foot, and it's tons of fun to drive. That's, but that's, that's what it is, man. And they are, and those are different tires. They're very narrow tires. On yeah. the on the on the i3, they have very tall, narrow tires yeah. to, to be as efficient as possible. But yeah, I would. It, that is a problem if it's 600 hours for four tires and you've had to replace um, them multiple times. Larry, maybe you can pipe in and tell us how you're driving that thing. But <laughs> if you drive like me, man, you're squealing the tires. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. 
I know. All right, let's see. Um, let's see. Da -da 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 -da. Let's see. Well, the service thing definitely make sure you yes. you double check that it can be serviced locally. The good thing with the Tesla is they have Tesla Rangers. If you find one, that guy they will come to your car and fix your car if it can be fixed, and they can do some tons of work. Yeah, I know um, with those Tesla Rangers. Yeah. All right. So the question came up. Uh, what did we say was a great website? Um, a good one to start with, just for doing research, is myev.com. Yes. Uh, and again, they've got a phone number. You can call them, uh, and they'll just chat with you. Yeah. I mean, if you just want to do your own research and look at all the different cars, I mean, it's it it's an amazing site. It really is. And they're totally dedicated to sole plug-in cars. Plug-in cars. So like, they, like I said, if it doesn't have a plug on it, don't buy it. They aren't going to try to upsell you to a more expensive ice car that's sitting on the parking lot. Right. Um, and then, uh, so that's a good place to do research. And then check out uh, CarMax mm -hmm. and uh, Carvana. Both of those are awesome. One thing to watch out for on those uh, is, you know, we don't have a lot of EVs locally, so you're probably going to ship one in. Like I said, I found mine in Atlanta. California, you know, it's 1500 bucks. Yeah. So now you can find them, like if you can find them locally though. I mean, mm -hmm. relative, right? like I said, mine was Atlanta that cost 99 bucks. I had to send it. Um, and same with Carvana. Look at the shipping cost on it because if it's close, it'll be a low shipping cost. If it's well, and that's what they do is shipping. I mean, they ship cars all over the country. I mean, that's, right. that's their game. Yeah. And then this question down here, do batteries crap out and need to be replaced like the standard Prius? Okay. Well, can they crap? You know, yeah, I mean they can. It's they, it's it's, they it's can. a part they can break, but it's yeah. But, but they the found to be they found them to be extremely reliable. Yeah. So that's the other thing about the the, the standard Prius, which ruined EVs for a lot of people, is that's a little bitty battery. Um, there's no thermal management on that thing. It's less than a kilowatt hour, and right? They it's do a, they do crap out. Okay, but like in a in a modern EV with good thermal uh, management of that battery, look here's the deal. Uh, in most EVs, honest truth, the battery will last longer than it does. The oh yeah, the other parts will start falling off before yeah. that bad. Yeah. Especially if you buy one that has way more miles. Like if, you, if you've got to do an 80 mile commute, do not buy the Chevy Spark. That's a terrible <laughs> car if you have an 80 mile, unless right, you have it's a, right at 80 because miles. you're right there. But if you have a 20 mile commute, even if my battery degrades to 60 miles, which heaven forbid, I hope that never happens, but I'll still be good to go three days a week that I can drive that thing back and forth to work. Yeah. You know, or two days a week, I guess. But yeah. All right, so the president of GM uh, earlier this year came out and said, look, uh, we over-engineered the Volt. Uh, he said, that battery pack may never die. <laughs> so That's a terrible thing to hear if you own the car. It's the best yeah, thing in the world you can hear. Um, so the, again, battery degradation is more of an issue with those early model leaks, I think, than anything else. So you just have to watch that. Larry responded, said, no, I try not to use a heavy foot. Uh, it seems to be a problem keeping it aligned. Okay, so that, yeah, that just may be something with that particular car. I, I have. I, I, I just, I know that I've heard from other people in, with EVs that that is something that you do spend more money on is tires because they do have a lot more grip. But I definitely, if it's out of alignment, I'm sure that does not help at all, and, and that's that's really unfortunate because everything I've heard, it's a fantastic little car to drive. Right, right. absolutely, absolutely. Um, let's see, here's one. Uh, can one trust uh, the DIC on the Bolt to get the correct battery degradation or in the case of the total charge of true accuracy and projected mileage with the U Bolt from the back? Um, yeah, I mean, battery degradation in the Bolt has just not been a big issue. No, and you know, and the accuracy, like I, I know for it's called the GOM, like the gasometer or whatever. Like we'll plug ours in now. I plugged it in this morning to eighty percent, and it said we had two hundred seventy-five miles to go. There's no, I mean, but if you drive it gently, you might get five miles a kilowatt hour on a sixty kilowatt hour battery pack. That's three hundred miles. Absolutely. You know, if you drive it, you know, easy like I would, unlike my wife, who she's just trying to get from A to B. You're a hypermarket. Yeah. Right. Right. And Larry, the last thing you put on there is that it feels great to drive and that's why you'll keep it. Yeah, I, I love the way they drive. All right, we're going to wrap things up. Uh, I can't read what that is. Yes, thank you. All right, so we're going to do, the, and I just did a random number generator on my phone. It's number 12 down from the top. So let me see if I can uh, see who this is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 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 e
think this is right. <laughs> uh, Larry Sherry is uh, who we came up with on that. Okay, so uh, Larry, I don't know if Larry's won a gift card today or not, um, but Larry, if you could just uh, send us uh, your email address. You can just put it in the chat there. On that. And who is who's like Robert? with the bolt turning off the AC results in immediate upward motion on the guest meter. And that is why I never use it Robert, <laughs> ever. I make my family suffer. Yeah. I hate to see that number because it will go down 35 miles. Look, but you got so many you. miles on that car, it'll go forever. I, get, I just, I'm cheap. I don't yeah. want to spend an extra 12 or 20 cents to okay. use the air conditioner. So. Oh. But no, it definitely does have that. And the heat will do the same thing. Yeah. Um, and that's why with, um, you know, some of these cars will have a, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, thing with the model Y, a heat pump, yeah. and that really helps out a lot. But it does using the um, the auxiliary stuff, like the auxiliary power things, like the AC and the heat, yeah. will will use the battery a little more. They would in an ice car. Yeah, it's just you just don't notice it as much right. because you're not getting very good account, fuel economy in an ice right. car. And Robert's 100% right about the heated seats. That's the way to go. <sighs> you can see. I have heated seats in my wife's car and heated steering wheel. Me too, in the Volvo. Yeah, heat is steering wheel. Hey, with that, I can drive, it can be 20 something degrees out and I'm good. Oh, yeah. I don't need to turn the, I don't need to turn the fan on. I just need heated seats and heated seats. Yeah, yeah, and, and in the Volt, like I said, we, I, we even have in the back, the two back seats. Oh, best thing ever. I know. All right, so uh, Larry, if you would, uh, send us uh, your email address in there. And uh, we are over our time. We could talk for hours on this. <laughs> and uh, thank you for joining us. Tell people it's gonna be a regular occurrence to get together. That was, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> we could totally talk about that. It would be YouTube about. Live. The Martin and Russell podcast. Hey, yeah, we're, was, we're totally yeah. good with that. We love it. So. Yeah, this is totally fun. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> okay. Well, I love this last comment. I love my uh, Bolt uh, Premier. Hate to drive my hybrid now. Uh, yeah, I get it. I get it. Absolutely. I have the same exact car, 2019 Bolt Premier. Best car ever. We don't work for GM. We really don't. <laughs> <laughs> What were you saying about GM? You said they, uh, they over engineered the battery? They over engineered the battery pack in the Volt and Volt. And the president came out and said that he said that pack may never die. No, it's going to die at some point. Let's be realistic. Um, but the point is, it's going to go and go and go. Yeah, my wife's car, like I said, her, 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 um, the Volt is just such a nice car. If it wasn't so many hard plastics, it would be a much more enjoyable experience to be in it. But Oh, and let me say this real quick. All right, so Larry sent in uh, his email address. Awesome. So we'll get that gift card out to you. And then um, Maple, uh, Maple, Mary Ann. So in the previous session on motorcycles, we never heard from that person. And so Maple, Mary Ann gets the gift card from the motorcycle uh, session on that. Yeah, there we go. All right, so that's great. Very good. Y'all, this was fun. Yeah, I love it. It was, it was good, yeah. So going down the car. That's right. <laughs>